First of all, thank you very much for accepting this uh, interview for us. And uh, my first question is about how does the World Health Organization appreciate the situation in Moldova regarding the tobacco control and the discontinued tobacco smoking? Maybe some trends you can emphasize, speak about uh, some positive aspects or what is lacking? Thank you, for, and uh, first of all, thank you for the interest on tobacco control because uh, tobacco control is something very, very close to the heart of all World Health Organization because the WHO Framework Convention of Tobacco Control and also because of the so much burden that we can avoid uh, in Moldova but also in other countries as well if we could avoid uh, smoking and reduce the smoking rates. Coming to Moldova, there are multiple trends, I would say. There are some positive elements and some elements which we might not be happy with as a public health specialist. So the positive is that there is really, in past few years, engagement to the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. And uh, if we measure that the legislation has been drafted, which is evidence-based, there is overall debate that has been there going from specialists to the government and now to the parliament where we hope also the second reading and finalization of approval of legislation takes place in 2015, then this is a positive because in many countries these processes have taken a long time and we are happy to see that in Moldova in the past few years this has really moved ahead. So there is an engagement to the international treaty and there is a draft law available. And also I would say positive is that we have very strong support to the stronger regulation and to smoke-free rooms and we see 90% of the population really supporting the better tobacco control in the Republic of Moldova. What concerns us is the trends. Over the last many years we still see that every fourth person on average in Moldova smokes. Smoking among men it's higher and we see almost every second man is smoking in Moldova. And if we think about the cardiovascular diseases, the lung diseases, the cancers, smoking causes, we would have much healthier workforce and I would say many Moldovans would enjoy much better retirement age and healthy aging in the country. So what concerns us that the smoking prevalence is at the same level and also the diseases caused by the smoking are on the same level and also one of the most effective measures on tobacco control like the taxes and the price of tobacco basically we see that the tobacco pack relatively uh, their price has decreased not increased so there is a balance of positive and negative their positive is engagement draft legislation negative is we still have the plateau in the level of smokers and the smoking prevalence as well we see that the prices are decreasing while they should increase and what is the solution is the adoption of the regulation that is now in the discussion in the parliament because it has all the measures to start really to decrease the prevalence rate without that legislation we will have continuous positive engagement to the international treaty without real impact. And that's why the really solution is move on on the legislation and also increases the, the increasing the taxes to tobacco. Regarding the, this draft uh, of uh, legislation, uh, which measures uh, does it contain in order to change, to really significantly, significantly sorry, change the situation? The draft legislation includes all wide package of tobacco control measures. It includes smoke-free public places. Mm -hmm. And we know that smoke-free public places are very effective. In other countries, we have seen that after implementing smoke-free public places, we see the decrease on cardiovascular diseases and already short term. In some countries, the admission to the emergency care departments has decreased 40%. So men and women, they don't have stroke or other diseases which are very acute and they could be healthier. Also, um, there are other measures 
like the um, health information and labeling the packages. Mm -hmm. Labeling is a very important, uh, for example, the pictorial warnings. Uh, there is a recent study that shows uh, the situation in the European Union and other parts of the world and we see, for example, our neighbor, Romania. In Romania, after introducing the pictorial warnings, 31% of the smokers want to quit. It's almost every third smoker have started to understand that they should quit. So it's a very effective measure. And we know also uh, many countries are moving towards the plain packaging, but this is not part of the regulation, but um, it's something that we should think of what's the next step. But the first step is really the pictorial warnings. Also, what's very important is the ban on advertisement, and um, especially for the children. Exactly. And uh, these all measures are there. And in addition, I think what is beyond this regulation, but very effective, most cost-effective intervention on tobacco control is the price of tobacco and controlling the price of tobacco and increasing the price. And that's why we would encourage the country also to increase the tobacco taxation and the prices, which currently is not yet the case. And it is healthy intervention, both for healthy population, but also for the healthy economy. Because increasing the taxes on tobacco, usually, and in all the countries we have seen, is increasing the revenues to the government and decreasing the smoking prevalence. So it's a combination of cost-effective measures in the draft regulation. What is your attitude towards uh, the smoking rooms or the smoking cabins, if I can mm -hmm. say? Uh, are they, let's say, effective in order to reduce the smoking generally or not? Uh, the evidence that we have is that uh, this is half a measure, mm -hmm. because um, in many places we see these, you have been in the airports, mm -hmm. we have these smoking cabins in the airport and the door is open. So if I travel with my children, I cannot sit next to it, even this cabin is there. Or very often we see that it, we have cabins, but in reality the ventilation system is not installed in the right way. So I'm still exposed to the secondary smoke when I'm going to the restaurant. So my proposal is really not to do the half measure, but to really to go to the full ban. And uh, it's a huge investment that the restaurants need to do. Mm -hmm. And I would say from other countries what we have seen is that those who are both restaurant and cafeteria owners, as well those who are the customers, after a full smoking ban in a half a year, there is generally both sides are supporting the ban because in most of the places, let's look to the Ireland, let's look to other countries, the number of visitors has increased, not decreased, after you have smoking ban. And there is also many reasons for that because people who are not smoking actively or who have quit, they already, after a few weeks, they can smell what they eat and they can start to feel the taste. Because what is the side effect of smoking is that you actually lose your sense of smelling and tasting as you did when you were in childhood. Many people and many smokers, um, they say that that's um, simply my, like, the, that my exclusive personal choice to smoke or not to do that. Uh, what do you think on this matter? Uh, is that is smoking about uh, personal choices or still the government has um, a high importance on this on this matter if you my, my I know the argument and many are asking the same question. May I ask in a different way? Do the children have a choice if their parents are smoking? They don't have a choice. They cannot live in the environment which is smoke-free. Do the workers in the pubs, restaurants, cafeterias have a choice to be healthier, 
They want to earn the income, they need to work, we want people to work and be active in the labor force, but they have to work eight hours, ten hours in the restaurant where people are smoking and they are exposed to the secondhand smoke. So maybe they would like to have the right to be in the smoke-free environment. So there is a tendency and we have to go back in the history how people have started to smoke, why people have started to smoke. But what is very important is that we are, when we are born to this world, we are smoke-free. And smoking is a habit that people have taken forward and uh, later on it's an addiction. So we know also that it is very difficult to quit smoking. So it's a difficult question without easy answer. But um, I tend to say that um, I would like to have my human right to be in the smoke-free environment. And um, of course, if some people decide to smoke, that's their decision. But most important is what is the role of the government is to help people not to start to smoke and also to help them to quit smoking. Because when people understand that they maybe don't want to smoke, they are already too much addicted to quit smoking. So, and from the, finally from the public health point of view, if we would live in smoke-free Moldova, we would live on average three, four years longer. So there is also an economic, lifestyle, happiness element there, uh, because uh, we are damaging our health very often ourselves, or we allow our neighbors or others to do that for us. You mentioned uh, children. How effective their education is in schools and at home regarding the topic of smoking? Or maybe how it should be uh, if a child goes to the school where um, he's told uh, that uh, smoking is a bad thing and then he goes home and his parents smoke? I think. School education is always important. It's the same way like in the kindergartens we should talk to our children that it is good to be energy efficient and green. I remember when my children came back from kindergarten they asked why we still keep the light in another room when we have moved to another room. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very very important life skill um, kind of um, the education has a very important role in developing the life skills. True. However as you asked before, what are the government measures? If we want, really, children not to start to smoke, it's really several elements. The price is most effective. If they don't, if uh, the prices of the tobacco products are higher, they don't start to smoke. We need to ban also the access to the smoking, that the smoking can be, um, kiosks should not be close to the school, for example or how tobacco is sold. Or also we know that when the parents smoke, and there are studies among the girls, when the mother is smoking, then the daughter is much more likely to start smoking. So you are right. There are trainings and we need to talk about life to the children in the school, about energy in the school, lifestyle in the school, about nutrition, how to eat healthy, how to live healthy, how to not to smoke, all of that is important. It's part of their life skill learning. But at the same time, the effective measures really are the same as we discussed before. It is about the prices, managing the access, and also raising the awareness. But raising awareness is not only in the school, it is also that children are not exposed to the advertisement. If you go now to the shop in Moldova, you find out that the tobacco is there next to the candies in the kiosks, in the, in the cashiers. And they are much more interested in the package than, for example, chocolate or gym, or they are in the equal level. So children are looking that this is partial, probably part of my life. And that's why in many countries you have separated that tobacco is not sold in overall shops or where next to the goods that the children want to buy. Also, very active advertisement is going on in Moldova. You go to the shops and you see these 
youngsters who are going around and trying to attract you to smoke. I have been exposed several times when I have been attracted to smoke. So I think with these things need to finish. I think this advertisement has a very strong impact. And whatever we do in kindergarten and school, the attractiveness that they see in the shops will be stronger. And that's why we need to have a more complex set of measures in place. Moving forward to the legislation, the concept of tobacco mitigation is widespread in Western countries. Still nothing similar here in Moldova. Should our people be encouraged to use you, tobacco companies, uh, or, or isn't it effective at all? I would say if I would be able to look what to do first, mm -hmm. then my proposal is to have strong legislation in place and enforce it. And then you would have much less litigations and many more people either don't start to smoke or they are able to quit smoking or they smoke less and then many people are also protected from smoke. So I would say it's everybody's choice if you are going to the court against the tobacco companies. But uh, I assume that the basis of any of these type of court cases is a very strong legislation in its own country. And here we talk about Republic of Moldova. So I think the first step is to have proper measures in place and then people can challenge. And it is not only about the court. We see currently many civil society organizations active on tobacco control. We see in Chisinau many restaurants who are already smoke-free and they are always full and people are happy there. So I would say the going to the court is usually the final step. There are many other things that we as humans can do and we can vote also with our legs. We don't need to go to the restaurant where there are smokers or we can ask our neighbor not to smoke not to expose ourselves to the damaging um, habit. Uh, how uh, the local World Health Organization office uh, collaborates with our government? Uh, maybe you can provide some examples, some projects uh, already uh, implemented. WHO in Moldova and I think WHO in general, so we work on many fronts uh, to help to share the evidence, what is cost effective. I think that's most important. What has worked in other countries? And all these measures we discussed today are basically part of this package. So I see already a number of public health experts in Moldova who know about that. And not only public health experts, I see also many parliamentarians, many members of the government, many high-level officials who understand very well what works and what doesn't work in the world. Also, what we have conducted is number of studies to understand what is the smoking prevalence and what impact the smoking has to the different uh, diseases and population health and it helps us to monitor and that's why we know that the prevalence has not changed. The prevalence is the same but what we also know is that there is overall very strong support to the smoking control measures. Then also what we have been doing is to uh, build capacities also work beyond the health sector to work together with the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Economy, also what is the impact of increasing taxes to both to the government revenues but also to decrease the smoking and we could save thousands of lives if we just increase the taxes and increase the price of tobacco. But it's not only what WHO does, we have many partners who are working with us, all the UN family starting from UN resident coordinator, going to all the UN organizations, we are engaged on tobacco control because the Framework Convention of tobacco, on Tobacco Control is one of the conventions that all the UN agencies are supporting and we wish that this is put in place in all the countries because that's really the first step to start to address the non-communicable diseases. But not only the UN family, we have also partners related to the UN family like the World Bank, who is currently also looking that if we want to see the change in public health outcomes, to see healthier Moldova, then we need to also increase the taxes and have a healthier economy through that exercise. 
So I think it's WHO, but we have many, many partners, I would say all the international partners who are working in health in Moldova are supporting the government, the Minister of Health to move forward. And I hope that those who are elected to the parliament also hear the voice of the population. Because if 9 out of 10 in Moldova would support this legislation, I think uh, they could hear better what the population wants. And in the long run, we will see healthier Moldova. Thank you very much.